Hey everyone, so this is another very interesting question that we have out here and there are two to three reasons because of which I decided to give you this question. Uh, one of the primary reason is that in GMAT you will come across a lot of questions where you will be given a definition uh, of a certain function or a certain say, scenario and on the basis of that you may be asked to find out the answer. Okay, And this is one such situation where you have been given the um, definition of least integer least integer greater than or equal to kind of a function okay so some of you might not even know how this works or what kind of a function is this but uh, you using the definition that is given to you it is very easy uh, to uh, to come to a conclusion or to infer what exactly does that definition mean okay uh, the second reason for giving you this question is uh, that uh, this question has a lot of learning uh, from the perspective of inequalities both the quadratic and absolute inequalities so i would request you to go through the solution with very carefully because while discussing the individual statements I'll, I'll be briefly covering and telling you how to find out the range of any inequality okay uh, both absolute and uh, uh, quadratic inequality obviously it will be very brief but uh, even that is going to help you a lot in solving a lot of quadratic inequalities and absolute inequalities question easily okay so let's get started let's read the question first uh, it's given that uh, there's a function that is box of x so this is usually written as box of x or you can say uh, bracket x whatever you want to call it but I'll be calling it box of x okay so this box of x denotes the least integer so we'll focus on each and every word slowly and steadily least integer okay so I'm looking for an integer that is smallest and it should be greater than or equal to x so if I have to write it mathematically I'll say this box of x is a least integer and this smallest so let me write it down below and this is greater than or equal to x now it might be difficult to understand in terms of just variable okay so it, it is always always best to take some values and try to uh, understand the definition easily because that's very easy to visualize so let's take some values let's take say x is equal to 1.5 uh, x is equal to say uh, 2.3 x is equal to say 3 x is equal to say 3.7 let's take these four values okay and let's try and find out what is box of x okay now if x is 1.5 then box of what will be one box of 1.5 let's think about it we are looking for an integer okay so the value of box of 1.5 should be an integer okay it should be greater than or equal to x now ask yourself I'm looking for an integer can it be equal to x 1.5 no it cannot be right so I'm looking for an integer that should be greater than this and it should be the least integer okay but it, the significance of this least is that if I want an integer that is greater than or equal to x I can take here 2 3 4 5 and so on but since I'm looking for the least integer that means the least integer that will just be greater than 1.5 would be okay so I hope the definition is slightly clear now I'm looking for an integer that should be greater than or equal to x and it should be least so the least the smallest integer that is greater than 1.5 is 2 so box of 1.5 is 2 now let's come to box of 2.3 okay now once again I cannot take 2.3 because I'm looking for an integer but an integer should be greater than this and should be least so obviously the value has to be 3 right what about an integer if I have an integer itself say 3 itself box of 3 now I'm looking for an integer is this an integer yes can I take an integer that is equal to x yes I can take equal to x so if I have a box of an integer then that is the value itself okay so box of 3 will be 3 okay so I'm sure you must have understood by now box of 3.7 will be greater than this the next integer that is 4 okay so I hope the definition is pretty clear now let's see what are we asked to find out we need to find out whether box of x is equal to 3 or not okay now ask yourself let's let's draw a number line okay to understand this properly 0 1 2 3 4 when will box of x be 3 now one value that we are sure of is when x is equal to 3 right if x equal to 3 then box of x will definitely be 3 
and we also know that at this point when x is equal to 2 then box of x is equal to 2 right box of x is equal to 3 but what about values that are between 2 and 3 well notice that box of 2.3 was 3 right so any value that is between 2 and 3 like 2.1 2.01 2.3 all will be an integer that will greater than greater than x right so if i take 2. Point, say 1 5 for example, 2.15, so I'm looking for an integer that should be greater than this. So I'll look at, I'll go to 3, right? So I can say, if the value of x is greater than 2, and if it is less than equal to 3, then box of x will be 3. Now, if you're wondering why not greater than 3, why not take 3.1? Well, think about it. If I take box of 3.1, I have to look for an integer that is greater than this, and it is least, so that would become 4 right so after all this pre-analysis what we could infer is that if x lies between this range and notice very carefully that x should be greater than 2 not greater than equal to if x is greater than 2 and less than equal to 3 in that case box of x is 3 okay so keeping this in mind this inference in mind we'll analyze each statement okay so let's move to step 2 and look at the first statement so statement 1 is x square minus 5x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0. Now notice you have a quadratic inequality here. And in GMAT, most of the cases, whenever you have a quadratic inequality, uh, it, you can usually, or in almost all the cases, you can factorize it and break it into two different factors. What I mean by that is you can write it like this, x square minus 3x minus 2x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0 or x into x minus 3 minus 2 into x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0, which would give you x minus 3 into x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. Okay. So I hope uh, this uh, is clear till that pa this part. So notice, uh, I, have, uh, I have from this inequality, we have come to this inequality, that is x minus 3 into x minus 2 is less than 0. Now what should I do now? And let me write it in this way to be better x minus 2 into x for the, for the sake of explanation. Okay. Now, whenever you uh, come across a quadratic inequality, which is in this form, you should always, always draw a number line and find out the range of the inequality. That will make your life very easy. And let me explain why. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a generic example, x minus a into x minus b is less than zero. Okay. And I'll take a parallel example here and write uh, so that it's easy for you to understand. Say x minus 5 into x minus 7 is less than zero okay so whenever you have a scenario like this okay always draw a number line and mark the zero points what do i mean by zero points you take x minus a is equal to zero and find out one of the points and say x equal to a okay i'm assuming b is greater than a here okay for the sake of simplicity so x minus b is equal to zero x is equal to b so you have got points a and b so if i have to draw a parallel here in the example that i'm showing you can say x minus 5 is equal to 0 or x is equal to 5. So that would be one of the points. And x minus 7 equal to 0 or x is equal to 7 and that would be the other point. Now once you mark these points on the number line, what you can do is you can simply start writing positive negative like this. Positive, negative, positive alternately. And start from the extreme right. Make the extreme right, extreme right as positive, then write negative, then write positive. Okay, now you might be wondering what what is this? What is the meaning of this? Well, understand when I'm saying x minus a into x minus b is less than zero. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is what value of x should I put here and here so that when I solve this, the product should be less than zero. And what is less than zero? Less than zero is negative, right? So if you have something like this, you draw the number line and see where are you getting negative. You're getting negative here, right? So you'll say the range of x would simply be this, nothing else. x lies between a and b. It's that easy. Now, if you're still confused, let you, this will definitely be clear once you look at this example. Take any value. So according to this number line, the range should be what? x should lie between 5 and 7, right? Check it for yourself. Take any value between 5 and, uh, between five and 7. Let's say, let me take the value 6. Okay, so ideally when I put x equal to 6 here, I should get less than 0 and check it out. 6 minus 5 is 1 
and 6 minus 7 is minus 1. What is 1 minus 1? 1 into minus 1 is less than 0, right? It's negative, right? Now check any value that is greater than 7. Let's take 8. So 8 minus 5 into 8 minus 7. 8 minus 5 is 3 and this is 1. See, you're getting greater than 0, but you don't want greater than 0, right? You want less than 0. Since you want less than 0, you look at the range that is negative, okay? Now, had the question been something like this, x minus a into x minus b is greater than 0, then that means you're looking for values which are positive. Look at your number line. Where are you getting positive? You're getting positive here, right? And you're getting positive here. So, you'll say x should be greater than b and x should be less than a and that's your range. So, in this case, if I was looking for greater than 0, then I would have said x is greater than 7 and x is less than 5. Okay, and and the and the beauty of this is that it can be extended uh, to not just the product of two numbers. It can be extended to as many numbers as you want. For example, if you have something like this, x minus three into x plus five into x minus nine. Okay, let me take one more x plus say two is say less than zero. Okay, so what you do is you find your zero points. X minus three is three, x plus five is minus five, x minus nine is nine and x plus 2 is, uh, so basically, like, so I'm writing this directly only. Uh, let me do it. When I say x minus 3 is equal to 0, what I mean by that is x is equal to 3, right? So you'll get x is equal to 3 as one of the points, okay? When x plus 5 is equal to 0, then x is equal to minus 5, right? So there will be a point minus 5. When x minus 9 is equal to 0, then x is equal to 9. This is another point. And when x plus 2 is equal to 0, x is equal to minus 2. So you'll draw minus 2. Now once you have drawn this, just start writing down alternatively plus minus plus minus plus minus plus. What are you looking for? You're looking for less than. So where, where, where do you have less, less than? You have less than here and you have less than here. So you'll say the range of x is nothing but 3 to 9 and minus 5 to minus 2. That's it. Just keep in mind that you need to write it in this form only, x minus a into x minus b into x minus c into x minus d in this form. If you have something like this, x minus a into say b minus x into x minus c into x minus d, then this will not work. It should be exactly in this form, x minus a, x minus b, x should be first. And that's very easy to get one and, and this has been discussed very in details in the video lessons. So I hope this is perfectly clear. And this is what we are going to use uh, while solving this question. Uh, one important thing that you can keep in mind here is that whenever you have a less than sign and there's a product of two, uh, two factors, then the range is always between those two numbers when it is less than. Okay. So if you want, you can remember it also because it's quite frequently used. Now let's go back to the question. So notice in this case, you have two points, right? The zero points would be what? Two and uh, 3. So you'll write positive, negative, positive. What are you looking for? You're looking for negative. So you'll say it lies, x lies between le less than equal to 2, uh, greater than equal to 2 and less than equal to 3. This is your range. Now does this range match the range that is given here? Now those of you who made the mistake of putting a greater than uh, a, a sign here, equal to sign here, you might have ended marking the answer as a. And that's incorrect. Notice the value of x should be greater than 2. But in this case, you are getting greater than equal to 2. So if, for example, if x becomes 2, then box of x will not be 3, right? That means using statement 1, you cannot get your answer because the value of x can be 2 also. But you don't want that. Okay, so this should be perfectly clear why statement 1 is not sufficient. Statement 1 is not sufficient because the value of x can also be 2. And if x becomes 2, then box of x will be 2, not 3. So x could be 2 also, x could be 3 also, both the values are possible from statement 1. That is why statement 1 is not sufficient and hence your answer cannot be A or D. Now let's move to the second statement where, which is mod of x is less than 3. And let me just slide down a bit. Statement 2 is mod of x is less than 3. Now once again, in case of modulus also, uh, there, there are a number of ways in which you can uh, solve it. And the best way is to draw the number line here also. Now notice you have mod of x. You don't have, uh, so you can say mod. So for example, if you had 
if you look for the zero point, if you had mod of x minus three, then the then the zero point is x minus x is equal to three, right? X minus three gives you the zero point as three. But if you simply have mod of x and nothing else, in that case you'll say x is equal to zero. So the zero point is nothing but zero. Okay, the origin. And and keep in mind when you say mod of x is equal to three, for example, let's look at equal to three. You say the value of x is plus three or minus three, right? Why do you say that? Well, you say that because the definition of modulus is basically when mod of x is equal to three, that means you're looking for a distance of exactly three from the origin. So from the origin uh, that is zero, if you want a distance of exactly three, distance of three, you'll go plus three and you'll go minus three. And that is why you say mod of x is equal to plus three and minus three. Now notice here looking for when you have a less than sign that that means you're looking for the distance that is less than three. Okay. So you're looking for less than three distance and that means these are the distance that are less than three, right? These are the distance that are less than three. If you go beyond three, then the distance becomes more than three, but you're looking for distance that is less than three. That means X must lie between minus three to plus three. Okay. Now, if x lies between minus three to plus three, then x can take a number of values, right? X could be zero, x could be 2.5, x could be 2.9, x could be anything, right? And if x is equal to zero, then box of x is zero. If x is 2.5, then box of x is three. Once again, notice that you're getting two different values. Since you're getting two different values, even statement two is not sufficient to get your answer. Okay, so I hope this is perfectly clear why statement two is not sufficient, because here also you'll get multiple values. Now let's combine both these statements. Okay. And let me draw the number line properly. For statement one, we got uh, two, three, and th this was the range that we got, right? This was the range for the first inequality. For the second one, we got minus three, to three. And notice I'm putting an empty circle here. Why? Because we don't need to consider the value three and minus three. And this is the range. Now, what is the common range between these two inequalities? Because I obviously, if I'm combining them, I'm looking for a common range. Notice the common range is all these values, except three. Keep in mind, I cannot take three. So if I combine both of them, I can say that the range of X is greater than or equal to two and less than three. So notice once again that X can be two. If X is two, then box of X will become two. But if X is less than three, X could be 2.5 also, right? Then box of X would be three. So once again, even after combining, you're getting two different answers. Since you're getting two different answers, that is why the correct answer in this case will be option E. So I hope this is perfectly clear. The purpose of giving these questions I told you was to help you understand how to do your pre-analysis and understand how to uh, read a new definition and understand what is the meaning of that definition. That is one. Second was I wanted to tell you how to solve an inequality and, and how to find out the range of inequality, especially in case of uh, quadratic inequality and absolute inequality. So I hope it's perfectly clear now and you should be able to find out the inequalities um, even if you're given these questions in a standalone way.